Hey everyone, Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To, and today we're diving into an exciting alternative for your home lab environment hypervisor, maybe one you haven't heard of or didn't know about. It's Nutanix Community Edition. Now, I mentioned Nutanix CE on the last video, and it's sparking quite a bit of interest. In this video, I'm going to give you guys a more detailed overview of Nutanix Community Edition, what it is, what it can do, its limitations, and just overall thoughts on Nutanix CE as a home lab hypervisor. So stick around. Now, just a level set, Nutanix did not sponsor this video and I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. I've only exchanged a few emails with the Nutanix contact that had reached out in order to get a more accurate picture of the product from my perspective. Now, with that out of the way, Nutanix Community Edition is a free, lightweight version of Nutanix Hyperconverged Infrastructure Software, HCI software, and it offers a way to uh, experience working with Nutanix without a commercial cost. It's of course, perfect for personal projects and testing. Think of it like VMware ESXi Free Edition, except, well, it's still around. Now, what do you get with Nutanix Community Edition? Well, when you download and install Nutanix Community Edition, you, of course, get to experience a Nutanix Cloud Infrastructure Platform and Prism. Now, Prism is their vCenter server-like interface, uh, and it allows you to have that unified management interface and experience in the Nutanix environment. Now, we've already alluded to this, it's no cost. So you can download Nutanix Community Edition for free and run it on your own hardware. And I will say this, it has very liberal limitations. In fact, I have not seen any memory limits or CPU limits that I have found to be documented. And you can run up to a four node cluster, which I think will cover just about 99.99% of home lab environments and any type of cluster that they or you guys would want to configure. Now, there are a few limitations, at least documented on the storage side. So you can run a combined maximum of either SSD or traditional hard drives per node of four devices. And there's a maximum of 18 terabytes that is usable for your cold tier storage. Now, Community Edition allows you to install a single node, a three node, and up to a four node cluster, as we mentioned. Depending on the hardware that you do have available, Nutanix does recommend a three node cluster for best practice to leverage the features that you get inside of Community Edition effectively. So smaller than that, you may run into issues where you're not able to use some of the functionality just because you don't have the available nodes available to take advantage of those. Now, what is the advantage of running uh, the Community Edition? Well, there are several that are at least documented and that I can think of. Uh, first and foremost, you're going to be able to gain experience running Nutanix software on your own hardware. We all know this. Home labs are a great way to gain experience in the real world. Uh, with software that companies are actually using. Uh, it has a really great community. Uh, you can exchange ideas with ones that are running Nutanix Community Edition, and they've got forums, they've got uh, Nutanix University. And let's face it, organizations are looking to their next move when it comes to enterprise virtualization. And I think that Nutanix has that enterprise polish that organizations are going to be looking for, especially if they're not comfortable settling on an open source hypervisor. So now let's take a look at a few screenshots of the installation process. And I will talk you guys through what you're going to see when you spin up a Nutanix Community Edition installation on your own hardware. In the first screenshot, we have created a bootable USB device where we're booted from the Nutanix Community Edition just using a Rufus provisioned USB a drive that we've booted our hardware from. And moving along from that, once you get out of the initial post and boot process, uh, you're going to see the Nutanix Community Edition installer at this point. And these screenshots I took a few weeks back, so I think 6.5.2 may not be the latest version, uh, but all of the screenshots 
should be similar to what you guys would see with the latest download. So first of all, you may not realize this. I know I didn't uh, when I first started looking at Nutanix. You can actually run Nutanix with VMware ESXi. So you can install the ESXi hypervisor and run that in front of a Nutanix storage backend. So you've, you're running ESXi with the Nutanix HCI storage configuration housing your, your data. However, you can go native Nutanix here with the AHV hypervisor, which is what I have selected. Next in the installer, they're going to display all of your storage devices and they're going to have you select which storage devices are suited for which role. You're going to have to pick a hypervisor boot device. You're going to have to pick storage for the CVM or the control VM to boot from. And then you're also going to select a storage device for your data. Once you've done that, you're going to provision a couple of IP addresses, both for the Nutanix AHV host, as well as the control VM IP address or subnet mask gateway, uh, all of those types of things. And here you can see, I did designate this as a single node cluster along with the DNS server configuration. In the next screenshot, of course, we're accepting the EULA. And then finally, we get to the installation running. The installation will complete after a few minutes. And this is not a short installation if you're used to installing VMware ESXi. This installation does take a bit because it's not only installing the hypervisor, it's installing the control VM and all of the other underlying infrastructure that Nutanix is going to need uh, on your hardware for that cluster configuration. So uh, keep that in mind. It, it is a rather lengthy installation, at least on my older hardware with the Supermicro host. So keep that in mind. Once you get to the end, it's going to have you eject the media and reboot the Nutanix AHV host. Now, boot process looks very similar to a lot of Linux distros that we know and love. You're going to get to the login prompt However, I found that it took a few minutes for everything to kind of settle in the uh, Nutanix Prism interface to be up and available uh, with that control VM. And so it, it did take a few minutes after I saw the screen where I had the login prompt and I was able to get to the Nutanix Prism interface. Now here, of course, when you first launch the interface, you're going to be asked to set that administrator password on the first visit to your Prism web interface. And so once you do that, you're good to go with your credentials. Another thing that you're going to need to provision is a Nutanix Next account. And that Nutanix Next account is the community account that basically validates or gives you access to Nutanix Community Edition, which you could wait till you get to this screen like I did, or you can configure the account ahead of time knowing you're going to need it for the installation. So that covers the process of installing Nutanix Community Edition. Very straightforward, fairly simple process. It does take a little bit of time to get everything up and running. But once you do that, let's see what the next steps are. So we're going to take a look at uploading an ISO image, spinning up a new virtual machine and connecting that virtual machine, of course, to the installation media, spinning up the network and a couple of those other required tasks that you're going to want to do as first steps with your first virtualized environment on Nutanix AHV. So once you log into Prism, you're going to navigate to the settings and image configuration. And on the image configuration, you're gonna see that upload image button that will be available. So once you uh, get to that point, you're just gonna click the upload image button. You're going to name an image. So I had an Ubuntu 2204 LTS server image that I had downloaded on my workstation and uh, my admin workstation that I was working from. You tell it what type of image that you're installing and from that drop down you're going to select iso you're going to tell it which storage container that you're going to store the iso image in and then you're going to select the upload a file and simply browse pick that from your local hard disk save that and then you're going to see that you've got your image uploaded to that image configuration and it is 
ready to be mounted to a virtual machine. Now, to create a virtual machine, we're going to navigate back out to the dashboard. And as you can see, I've got the one designated to the dropdown, we've selected VM. And then on the number two designation, we are selecting the create VM option over in the upper right hand corner. This is going to launch the dialog box where you're going to configure all of the necessary uh, configuration for the new virtual machine. Of course, we're going to name it. We're going to set a time zone. We're going to configure the compute details. You can configure vCPUs, memory, much the same as you would do in uh, VMware vSphere or, or ESXi connected to the host client. And we're also going to need to update the virtual machine with the ISO image that we have just loaded. So we're going to tell it, not only am I going to add a virtual disk for the operating system to be loaded on, I'm going to add that CD-ROM image that we also have available to us. And you're going to update the, the virtual machine and then save that configuration uh, before moving on. Now, also on your network configuration, you can select an existing network that you have available to you or that you've configured on your Nutanix AHV host. Uh, here you can see that I've configured a server's VLAN that matches with a virtual uh, network that I have configured in my home lab environment. And I'm simply telling the virtual machine that I'm going to connect to that server's VLAN. So uh, pretty straightforward there, just like you would do uh, setting a port group in VMware ESXi. After that, we simply boot our Ubuntu server LTS virtual machine. You're going to see the exact same process. It boots from the ISO image. You see cloud in it. You'll see uh, prompts for your configuration of that Ubuntu server. Now, I do want to tell you guys about an issue that I ran into with Nutanix Community Edition. I had to use Firefox to access the Prism interface, and that was because uh, the other browsers that were Chrome-based complained about the cipher that was being used and a couple of other things about the self-signed certificate that came out of the box with Nutanix Community Edition. Now, evidently, this is a known bug that is in Nutanix Community Edition, and it is something that I do believe is in the, on their roadmap of updates that they're, they're going to get into future Community Edition updates. Uh, but basically, the resolution of this is fairly easy. You basically just regenerate the self-signed certificate. Click the configuration cog in the upper right-hand corner of your Prism interface. Uh, then you're going to go to your security and SSL certificate, as you see I have designated in the number two. Number three, you're going to select the replace certificate on your Nutanix AHV cluster. It'll take you to a SSL certificate screen and you simply are going to select the regenerate self-signed certificate and hit apply. And it's going to have you confirm that. Are you sure you want to uh, generate the new certificate? You're going to click OK and then the certificate is regenerated at that point. And that will get you past that issue if you run into that with a Nutanix Community Edition uh, installation out of the box. There is a limitation that I do want to mention with Nutanix Community Edition that could be a huge problem for some in the home lab. It does not support external storage, such as iSCSI or NFS storage. Nutanix started from the ground up as an HCI solution. So just know that today you can't run Nutanix and expect to connect to an external storage array or NAS that you may have sitting around. Now, there are, of course, caveats to that. You can mount iSCSI LUNs directly in guest virtual machines, and you can connect a Nutanix compute cluster to a Nutanix storage server cluster, which is also in their supported configuration, but not any other option at this time. Now, I will say this. I don't know anything official, but I think this is a solution that will be coming in the future with the Broadcom buyout of VMware. I think if Nutanix is smart with their business and play their chess moves correctly with everything going on in the industry right now, I think it would be incredibly smart for them to release Nutanix AHV as a standalone hypervisor and allow external storage that would essentially provide another option for running virtual machines. Now, I don't have any inside information there. I just have a hunch and just reading a few blurbs here and there about what possibly could be coming.
Well, that's a wrap on Nutanix Community Edition for Home Labs. If you're interested in kicking the tires, I hope this video helps you to get started and also check out my written blog post for more detail on the steps. I encourage you to do give it a try, at least get familiar with the solution as you may see it somewhere in the future uh, in your career path. Share your experiences, questions, or any challenges that you face in the comments for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more virtualization insights. Stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.